Perfect. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks for coming along, everybody. Just looking at the attendee list. Um, it's fantastic. I see a number of names I know, a number I don't. Um, really, really glad to have everybody here. Um, and yeah, so um, as Derek said, um, I'm Dave Blodgett. We've got Anders Hopkins, Tahir Jagini, and um, Rich McDonald is on leave right now, but I'll be presenting some material for him a little bit later. Um, and we're going to talk about the um, Hydro Network Link Data Index and the tools that are associated with it or use it. Um, so this is a, a pretty exciting new, but um, becoming more stable and more for real project that um, I've been working on with these guys and others for a few years now. Um, and we're, I feel like we're really on the cusp of kind of blowing the doors off this. It's really, it's really come a long way and it's, it's exciting to see um, where we're at. So I thought it was a good time to come and share with everybody and just uh, give you an idea of where we're at and where we're going. So. Um, you saw this, um, I'm going to do a little bit of introductory material and then I'm going to pass it over to Anders to talk about um, his work using the NLDI and some, some new functionality that's going to be coming out um, within the context of the NLDI soon. Um, and that's largely in service of the stream stats project. Um, and then um, I have a little demo or just a little thing to show how we're doing um, cross sections and model data discovery through the NLDI and then um, Tagger has a really cool project called High River. It's a Python package that uses the NLDI and a number of the same services that um, used in the other parts of the demonstration. So I thought I'd invite him to come along and kind of give, you know, show off his his work and hopefully that you folks find that useful in the kind of Python uh, scripting and development space. And then um, if time allows, uh, I have a, a I have a, a couple of our packages and HD plus of tools and data retrieval that I can show a little bit about. And then I'll wrap up with a little bit about um, this thing called geoconnects.us, how we're um, integrating the NLDI with geoconnects. Um, if we have any time, which we may, um, if, if we all go super fast, um, we will take questions then, but you can always reach out to any of us um, offline with questions. So key things I want everybody to kind of take away here today um, is the kind of components that we're talking about here. So the core API application programming interface is the networking data index API. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Um, the NLDI geoprocessing um, API or, or geoprocessing service, um, depending on how you want to think about it, is what we're working on right now. And Anders is going to show an application of. Um, this geoconnects.us thing, which is really akin to the, um, the digital object identifier resolver, only it's intended for um, URLs that point to either environmental features or monitoring locations by and large. Um, and then we've got this kind of collection of client applications that use this NLDI API geoprocessing and geoconnects.us. Um, so the big component lists, um, the idea here is that all these systems, um, both server, server side, client side, kind of web infrastructure, are designed to, around a really consistent data model um, or a collection of consistent data models. Um, they share persistent identifiers. As, as we go forward and improve things more and more, they will share persistent, identifi persistent identifiers for real world features, rivers, aquifers, et cetera. Um, and something I'm really excited about here is that we're using multiple technologies, R, Python, Java, et cetera, um, SQL. Um, but we're applying the same logic using these consistent data models. And the, the, so focusing on, at that level of like data model and logic, and then uh, implementing it in multiple languages is, I hope, going to lead to better accessibility and, and adoption. So, okay, so why the NLDI? Uh, I'm going to move fairly quick here. Um, I, a lot of these things I kind of take for granted, but it's not always totally obvious. Um, you know, the data of interest to a particular person is super diverse and discovery of that data is often going to require special knowledge of where to go looking. Um, and then we have all these other kind of factors, you know, we've got um, a lot of data that's hydrologically meaningful, but when you go get it, you don't know what river it's on. Um, we've got many, many data providers and they change their data, they change what's available, they add new, they remove stuff all the time. Um, and then hydrographic network data are huge. 
And you don't want to have to have the whole network available all the time if you want to do a little bit of network navigation. So the, the NLDI is targeted at solving kind of this suite of problems um, with a, a kind of regularly updated central index and a set of APIs. Um, so I'm going to move on. So what is it? It's a search engine that works with the hydrologic network. And it can index new data and provide search services over that collection, right? It's also a set of services that's capable of returning custom hydrologic features, so views of the network, views of basin boundaries, downslope traces, cross sections, some of this other stuff we're going to talk about soon. Um, so in other words, it's it's a convenience API. Um, it's, a, it's a way of accessing a set of linked content and data um, that is convenient to the people that um, it's designed for. Um, and hopefully those people are some of you. So, okay, so a little bit of a network diagram. Um, so in the cloud here, the internet, we've got a collection of data sources. And typically these data sources would just get accessed by some client software and that'd be the end of it. The client would be, their job would be figuring out where is this in the world? How does it connect to rivers that I care about? These kinds of things. But the NLDI comes in with an API that has a, a backing data store that should hold the data that the client software is looking for. And so the client software can go through this NLDI API, access indexed data and features from the, the National Hydrography data set um, to kind of fill in the gaps of what's where um, and, and kind of what is that hydrologic context, right, for, it, for data sources. And then over here on the right, we have this geoprocessing API that kind of enriches the things you might be interested in at a particular location on the hydrologic network. So this geoprocessing API is able to do things you know, like pull a cross section across a river, um, split a split a basin at, at a particular location, so you get a, a catchment area to a very particular spot. Um, you know these these kinds of slightly value added processes that do take a little bit of time, but aren't like groundbreakingly difficult to, to implement into a geoprocessing service. Okay, so what's the long-term? Um, you know, we've, we've got a range. So currently we only have two indexing methods. We drop a point into a watershed and say the point's in that watershed and the watershed is part of a hydrologic network, or we can just take an identifier and a location along a river. Right, and and just join up to that. There's not and there's no logic to that. It's just ingesting data that happens that use shared identifiers. But we want to have a shared a, a range of kind of flexible or um, configurable indexing methods. And this is akin to you know, Google Webmaster Tools. You go in and you configure the, the crawler to do what you want against your web page. Right. We want to be able to allow people to do that for their data. Um, so currently, the NLDI only goes to the nearest catchment. Um, so when you get something back, you don't really know anything other than what little local area, one of the 2.6 million across the country, but still you only know that little area. You don't know if you find two gauges that are in that catchment, which one is upstream or downstream of the other. Um, you don't know, you know, you don't know that precise location on the network. So we definitely want to be able to support that precise network location. It's, it's, a, it's a complexity issue, hard to support in a simple way, but it's necessary. Um, and then currently the system is only supporting JSON and GeoJSON. And the, the original vision for this system, the, the network linked data index, was that it would support formal linked data. Um, and that's something where, you know, it's, it's, it's a big box to open up and figure out how to implement, but it's still something that's kind of on the radar. It's been planned to a certain extent. And I, I think we're going to see that happening before too, too long here. Um, and then the last thing here, you know, currently we're, we're working off of NHD plus version two, which the, the network that the EPA and, and the National Water Quality Assessment um, Program has been developing and improving over quite a few years. Um, but that has a very limited set of features in comparison to NHD plus HR. We, we definitely want to get there to have that, that higher resolution, that higher fidelity, especially in upland areas where there might not be features in V2 and you might be interested in what's going on with the water bodies in that area. So. So that's the long term. I'm up against my time that I want to I want to pass this along, but I, I definitely I want to kind of leave you with a little bit of a, a technical um, deep dive here. Um, and this is so this is the NLDI API. Um, so be, behind here is the the actual web URL. 
but the rest of this is kind of configurable information that you put into this API. Um, so it all starts from this feature source and feature source might be endless site, might be water quality portal site, might be com ID. You can actually start from the NHD plus version to um, common identifier, this com ID thing. Um, and then this slash feature ID, this is the ID in, from this feature source. So in the case of an endless site, this feature ID is going to be the site ID for the endless site. Um, so that tells you essentially where on the network you're interested in. It allows you to enter the network using an identifier from any feature source that has been indexed. And as long as you know about this feature ID, you can enter the network at that location. And then you can do things from that location. So you can pull a basin boundary. You can do a network navigation. This nav type is upstream tributaries, downstream main, that kind of thing. And you can either retrieve the network itself, so the flow lines themselves that represent the network, or one of the other feature sources. So you could find endless sites upstream of an endless site, or you know, water quality data downstream of your you know, particular location in the NHD Plus that you want to start from. Um, so it's very flexible in the sense that you can enter anywhere and then retrieve information from any other data source that's been indexed. And the last thing in here that I'll point out is we also have a pretty large selection of, of catchment characteristics that have been indexed into um, the, the system. Um, so these are these are landscape characteristics, climatology, um, you know, hydrologic conditions, all, all kinds of things that have been um, attributed to catchments and then accumulated downstream. So you can go pull the basin average of some important landscape characteristic um, for your location on the network, um, which is, it's incredibly helpful if you just need to know some basic information about a place with that hydrologic accumulation as your kind of uh, you know, accumulator, your, your sum, right? Um, and the last thing I'd point out is um, we do support some kind of discovery through latitude longitude. So you can just pass in a, a long lat point and discover um, one of these feature source feature ID um, locations um, for, for that position. So, so that's that's cool. If you'd like to learn more, there are a couple of blogs. If you just Google water data blog, um, NLDI intro and NLDI update are two um, two blogs that I've prepared over the last few years um, that are um, a summary of, of this and, and much more. So, okay. Um, quick demo to show how we're using this. Um, the first one I have here, um, we, PowerPoint is going to play nice. Bring this over here. Okay, so these are the this is the the kind of next generation um, National Water Information System um, web page interface, and so this typical plot of what's going on at a gauge over time. Um, and what we added in these pages is a little interface that uses the NLDI. So. This called the NLDI for this endless site, and it said go downstream main. So that's this downstream flow line. And it said upstream main. So you got the upstream flow line. And it also got the basin, right? It just pulled back a basin for this location. Um, it looks like the other, this active monitoring location actually doesn't come from the NLDI, but that's not pulling in yet. Usually there's a collection of monitoring locations around here that you can click on. Um, but anyway, so this is, this is an application of the NLDI in one of the kind of flagship products of um, the, the USGS water mission area. Um, and it, it adds a lot of value. You can actually see the hydrologic context of this gauge um, and it just pops this geometry back super fast. Right? So yeah, here's these, other, here's these other gauges we could walk around and see, see what's going on, right? Um, okay, so that's that demo. And the second one, I'm not gonna go into great detail, um, but I just wanna kind of highlight that this is available. Um, so waterqualitydata.us, um, if you go into download data, there is this map here um, that allows you to discover water quality portal sites upstream and downstream of currently active endless stream gauges or 12 um, outlets. So this allows you to start pretty much anywhere on the network and discover wa water quality data using network navigation as a filter essentially you can apply all these other filters and discover the data you're interested in in the actual hydrologic system that you're working in um, and then the, the last um last thing i'll show hopefully i have a url 
Yeah, so let's just go to one that I have saved here. Um, there are standalone site pages in the water quality portal that show um, how the NLDI can be used. So this just did a downstream main navigation for flow lines, an upstream tributaries navigation for flow lines. And then it also made queries for water quality portal sites in the neighborhood, upstream tributaries and downstream main of this one. So if we zoom in on these clusters, you can start to see these are water quality portal sites that were discovered as being on network relative to the one we started at. Um, so I could go to this site page and now we have the same thing where it just queried the NLDI for um, sites upstream tributaries downstream main um, from the one we're starting at. So this is, I'm just using this as a, an example of like the power, but this was the first real application of the NLDI and this was where people were like, wow, this is, this is powerful. You can really do some cool stuff here. So, um, so that's the, I guess that's the intro and the two kind of main demos that I have. Um, I will stop sharing and pass over to Anders and let you take it away. Great. Thanks a lot, Dave. Just want to make sure everybody can see my screen right now. Not yet. Not yet? Now we got you. All right. Great. Still a little bit new at Zoom. Normally use Teams these days. But yeah, um, so I'm going to talk about Basin delineation and raindrop trace. Um, this would fall into the ge uh, the geo processing API category that um, Dave was talking about earlier. And specifically, I want to talk about it within um, the context of stream stats. Um, for those of you who don't know, stream stats is a, a web app that uses state based data sets to delineate drainage basins, uh, compute basin characteristics, and estimate flow stats at ungauged locations. So currently, the basin delineation feature and the raindrop path feature both exist in um, stream stats. There's just some limitations to them. Uh, and that's why we wanted to make new functions that were more um, closely aligned with NLDI. Um, so currently the basin delineation for stream stats uses state-based data sets. Um, some states have not yet implemented stream stats, um, such as Florida, Texas, and Michigan. So we cannot actually delineate basins um, in those areas. Also, um, this de basin delineation function with um, stream stats relies on arc hydro. Um, and then the raindrop um, trace with stream stats also relies on an ESRI REST services. Um, it does use NLDI, however, it doesn't split the, the raindrop path at the, um, inter the intersection point with a flow line. And I'll, I'll get to that later. Um, right, so why new tools? Um, wanted new basin delineation and raindrop trace tools that implemented NLDI, um, remove reliance on ESRI, and also speed up performance. Um, so yeah, this is uh, just a quick uh, screenshot of the output of the split catchment function. Um, the, the inputs are just a long lat coordinate, and then there's also um, an upstream variable um, that you can select true it, was, it will merge everything upstream from the click point um, with the, the split portion of the local catchment. Um, so the, the outputs of this function are both the local um, NHD catchment that the click point falls within, and then also the split catchment portion or the merge catchment portion. Um, and then the flow trace tool also takes a long lat as an input. Um, and then it has uh, two other parameter variables, um, that being a Boolean variable for um, the raindrop trace, and then also um, the direction um, that you'd like to split the, the NHD flow line. So you can either have the entire flow line returned or just the down or upstream portion of it. Um, yeah, so just behind the scenes of these tools, um, uh, they're up on GitHub right now, so I can put this in the chat for anybody who wants to look at it. Um, they just have some pretty standard Python library dependencies, REST area, GDAL, Shapely, and PyProj. Um, and then the main dependency for the flow trace tool is uh, PyFlowDirection, which is an open source uh, Python library. Um, and then they, of course, pull from the NLD, NLDI uh, API for flow lines and catchments. And then also for our um, elevation data, 
it relies on the 30 meter CONUS data from uh, NHD plus V2. And Dave made a cloud optimized geotiff of this data. So uh, that's what that's what it, our elevation data is coming from. Ask Dave about that if you have questions about COGS because he can explain a lot better than I can. Right, so um, I, I'll just go straight to this little web app that I that I have. Um, the, this over here is stream stats. Um, and if we have time, I can demo that. But I will just demo split catchment real quick. I always have to use examples from Iowa because that's where I'm originally from. Um, so we'll just split, or we'll click on the screen, and this will delineate a basin for us. Um, split catchment is on the upstream. That variable is set to true, so it should merge the split catchment with everything that's upstream. So everything that's in yellow is the just the local NHD catchment, and then it is splitting this catchment, grabbing everything that drains from that catchment to that point as well as everything that's upstream from this uh, from this local catchment. So the way that this works behind the scenes, if we turn this off and click on hopefully the same point, um, it, it won't return the upstream portion, but it will just split the catchment and we'll get a better idea of what's going on. So to speed this up, rather than delineate the entire upstream portion from a raster, it only um, takes the drainage of that local catchment and then uses the NLDI to grab all the other basements, uh, the catchments that are upstream from it. Um, so that's just one way that we, we speed up this function. And then flow trace. So we can use flow trace to trace from any point to the nearest NLDI. Oh, and I actually had the raindrop path set to false. So if we do that again, it should return the path. And there it is. So this blue line is a raindrop line, and then the, the yellow line is the actual NHD flow line. And you can see that it split it right here at the intersection point. And then it also returns it with some, just some information, um, stream name, com ID, reach code, et cetera. Um, also has the length and meters of the raindrop path and the intersection point and uh, long lat. We can change this so that it will split the flow line and return the upstream portion of it or we can just have the entire portion of it returned. I was about to comment that is pretty quick, but just right there, it did take a little bit longer. Um, any questions about this tool? I got it open right now. Let's keep moving. We're, we're doing okay. All right, sounds so good. Um, right, so in the future, we, we want to use these two tools in the national version of StreamStats. Um, that can query um, both state-based and CONUS data. Um, there's also a time of travel app that's being developed that the, uh, the flow trace tool will be utilized in as well. Um, so with that, I'll stop sharing my screen and pass back to Dave. All right, so let's share that again. Uh, are you all seeing my screen now? Not yet. Screen one, share. All right, that's better. You got it now. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. So thanks for that, Anders. Um, the, the other thread that's very similar to what Anders is working on is some stuff that my colleague, colleague Rich McDonald, has been doing. Um, and he's, he's stepping um, into a little bit different space. He's built a, a processing service that can pull a cross section, not necessarily just from, so what you just saw was pulling from elevation data derivatives associated with the NHT plus version two, um, because those catchments were defined on that, that exact elevation service. Um, but in this work, we wanted to pull cross sections from the kind of best available um, and, and there's, so I've got two examples here, um, one um, for an, a next generation water observing system um, research and development project. Um, and then another, I guess this is stepping into a little bit different application of the NLDI. So I'll, let me start here. Um, so essentially, if we have a stream gauge um, that's in the NLDI, um, we can kind of 
enter a, a little bit of information about it. Um, and work through um, a process. I'm not going to go through this code in detail. I'm just kind of scanning to remind myself. Um, so yeah, we can work through a process of, of essentially figuring out where that gauge is, what its elevation is, um, where it is on the NHT plus version two, um, these kinds of things. And so the, the, the exciting thing here um, is that he, we're able to query um, the 3D elevation programs um, elevation data index for the kind of best available digital elevation model. So here we've got a DEM res thing that's basically a, a placeholder for the fact that we um, are going to get whatever the best available resolution DEM is. Right, so here available resolutions, um, three meter, 10 meter and 30 meter are all true. So that's cool. Um, and we have a map of our, our stream gauge um, and some nearby locations. And the, the thing that this next, next generation water observing system project is working on is this idea that we could have multiple points um, that have been surveyed in around a gauge that are at multiple elevations. Um, and so, so here these points are, here's the gauge, Here's bank full elevation, and here's a street, um, Sewanee Dam Road, right? And so you probably the elevation of the bridge deck or the, the dam itself. And so I guess the work that Rich has put together is going to turn into a web service that will allow you to come in and say, here's a network location on the NLDI. Um, you'll specify left bank, right bank, um, and to basically to, to define this line. Um, and then Rich's tool will go out, discover what the best available DEM is for you, pull it down, and generate a cross section for that location. Um, and what we're showing here is that if we all, if we have additional um, points, so here we have um, the, the cross section elevation, the street elevation, and bankful, um, we were able to plot these on a on a, a, a graph. And so the vision here is that this might show up on an NWIS um, gauge page near you, right? Um, so when you see the stream gauge. Um, elevation. You might also see a cross section pulled from 3D, the 3D elevation program, best available DEM. Um, and you might see some kind of relevant elevations near the gauge. So that's fun. So we can do this for a couple different different resolution um, DEMs. Um, so more on this soon. This is really early work. Um, I, I pushed, I, I asked Rich to prepare this for me just so I could kind of show off what he's up to. I'm really excited about this. Um, it's really, this is, this is good stuff. So now the second one um, is a, a similarly kind of early, but also um, really exciting piece of work where we want to associate um, model results with the network. Obviously the stream gauges, stream gauges are akin to model prediction locations. So if we have a, have a hydrologic model that predicts flow at one of the locations that's in the NLDI, we can put those in, in our in the USGS part or in the um, USGS water mission area modeling parlance we're using here. It's the National Hydrologic Model, and POIs are points of interest. Um, so we can put those points of interest into the NLDI as kind of model prediction locations. And so, what Rich has worked up here is this: basically, we can discover what model data are available from a particular data source. In this case, it's a it's a web web service that's available from a Threads data server. Um, so we can see we have seg outflow, um, and the seg outflow thing is uh, in, you know, it's going to have units of like cubic feet per second. So that's interesting. That's meaningful. And then we can search the NLDI for a particular um, gauge ID, um, and I believe he, yeah. So here we're 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 searching the NLDI where the feature source is NWIS sites. Um, and down here, the data source, like I talked about earlier, we're, we're, we're basically looking for model data relative to some stream gauge. So that's cool. We're going upstream main stem and looking for model data upstream of that stream gauge. Um, so we find some of that, um, that model data. That's fun. Here's our NWIS sites. Here's our GFPOIs upstream main from that. Um, we can plot up where those are on this particular river. Um, and then using kind of this system of services, we can go pull um, the streamflow data um, from, from NWIS and the streamflow data from the model. 
Um, so this is this is really just a demonstration of some basic infrastructure that we're now able to kind of bring to bear where we can put our model data and register it in the NLEI. We can publish it as web services. We can then discover model information relative to um, all the other data that's in the NLEI. Um, and ta-da, we've opened up kind of a, a potential huge new um, way to, to work with this hydrologic, hydro hydrographic information. So um, that's the part from Rich. I will stop sharing. I believe Taher is up next. Hello, everyone. Uh, sorry for the noise. Start sharing my screen. Uh, can you see my screen now? We can. Uh, okay. Uh, so I'm going to go over some of the things that uh, some of the things that are covered with the High River package. So High River is for accessing hydrology and climatology uh, data within the, the U.S. for now, but it's used as web services to pull the data directly from the server side. So uh, it's going to help with uh, kind of taking advantage of all the. Uh, uh, powerful uh, web services that provide the data for doing uh, hydrology and climatology analysis. So Hardware uh, includes seven packages. There are some high level packages that gives access to, that these packages gonna give access to uh, some of the web services that provide the data directly. Uh, so, for example, for, for PyNHT, it provides access to NHT, NHT Plus, HR, and also uh, high resolution and mid resolution, as well as uh, value added attributes and also water data, NLDI, some other kind of national map services. And then there's also PyGeoHydro, it gives access to, NLW, to NWIS, uh, National Inventory of Dams, and also there is uh, Py3D, Py3Dev, which gives access to topography data from uh, 3D elevation uh, service. And then there is PyDamit for uh, kind of getting the climate data. And then also there are some low level packages that are available that uh, these will provide you with some tools that you can uh, kind of connect to any of the uh, web services that are based on RESTful or WMS or WFS. And so these are, if you know your way around with uh, of working with web services, you can use RESTful, WMS or WFS, then PyGOGC, and then GeoUtils, and then Async uh, Retriever. Uh, you can use these to kind of uh, have access to those databases. And then these are essentially the engines for these four packages as well. So I'm not going to go over all the details of all the packages, but I'm going to go over the things that are related to uh, kind of NLDI. So uh, we are going to kind of first look at the, all the U.S. states and uh, all the, the coastlines, and then try to get the USG cessation data. And then uh, uh, we're going to take a look at the accumulated dams for, for at the, the Columbia River. So first we can use the, the, the Tiger web service to get the uh, kind of the data that we need mostly for, uh, for plotting purposes. So we get the, the coastline data and then we get the kind of estate data. These are from uh, the, the census kind of web service that they provide the, these files so we can directly pull the data and then kind of uh, get them for, for the CONUS. Uh, so an add a flag that we know all the estates that are along the coast. Next, what we want to do is that we want to use PyGeoHydro to get all the tidal stations using water service API from, uh, from USGS. So uh, when you look at the kind of uh, the documentation, we can see that what kind of, uh, kind of parameters that you need to provide. For example, we say that take a look at the estates, all the uh, U.S. states that are uh, along the uh, along the coast, and then only take the stream river and also uh, estuary uh, states, the tidal tidal stations and estuary ones, as well as the ones only that have daily value data. So when you pull all the data from 
from the from the Indalia service, uh, we want to kind of uh, take a look at the, what are the available stations uh, along the coastline. So these are all the stations, and and the function that I showed you uh, from previously runs under the minute and kind of looks at all the stations within CONIS and pulls the, the relevant data that are needed for our purpose. So now that we have these stations, we have the station uh, kind of numbers, now we want to get the uh, mainly discharge data for all the stations. We have around 400 stations. So the only thing that you need to do is that it's just with, with this uh, one line of code, you can provide all the station IDs and then the dates that you're interested in, let's say that you want to hold the data for 15 years. And then once you just give these two variables, then what we can kind of get all the availability. What, what this function does is that is under the hood, it's, it's just going to take a look at uh, all the stations and then it's going to drop the ones that either don't have the, the values that are between, uh, for example, between this date or the, there are kind of uh, missing variables there. It's going to kind of drop everything and then inform the user that these are the stations that have been dropped. And then uh, once we have the, the data, now we can take a look at how we can use the uh, river network data from, uh, from NLDI service. So for, we can just kind of instantiate the, uh, the service. And then we want to get all the uh, main rivers and not tributaries, only the, the main line for all the 400 stations. So what we need to do is just a kind of a fancy way of dealing with uh, if there is a connection error, or some other things that happens, but the, the main thing that, uh, that kind of pulls the data is this, uh, is this only one function that you say that I want all the upstream mains and up to 2000 kilometers of this uh, kind of uh, USGS station that is provided here. So it's, it's going to go through all the stations and then pull all the data from the using NLDI. And then we can see that, for example, out of the 400 stations that we provided, 100 of them uh, are not included in NLDR, but the total number of flow lines that are pulled from the from NLDR are 21k uh, uh, kind of flow lines. So if we kind of plot all the flow lines that we uh, pulled from from NLDI, we can see that uh, uh, that for example, these are the all the dates. But and I also want to mention that we set a limit of uh, 2,000 kilometers. So some of some of the rivers might not go all the way to to upstream. So next one thing we can do is, as Dave mentioned, there are some uh, catchment level catchment level uh, attributes that that are available from uh, from science uh, that are available in NLDI. So one thing we can do, one of them, for example, is that we can get all the dams that are available, uh, all the accumulated dams that are available at uh, for the line scale. So we just want to use that, uh, that we can use the NHT plus kind of attribute function. It's just going to pull the, all the data uh, because we are looking at uh, kind of around uh, 21K stations. So instead of uh, query, querying one of them uh, one by one, what we want to do is that we want to pull all the data from the database because sometimes it's, it's faster to pull all the data and then kind of uh, work with uh, kind of filter the data and instead of kind of querying one by one. So that's what I did here. I just, uh, which we can just take all the data and then what we need to do is that we can kind of, uh, uh, based on all the flow lines that we pulled, we can filter the data and then get the ones that we need uh, from, the, uh, from the database. We can see that out of the 400 stations, uh, 100 of them uh, kind of are not available in the uh, in the in the attributes uh, database that we pulled. So now, uh, one one thing we can do is to also pull the uh, mainly uh, mean annual discharge again using uh, NWS service. These are the, the annual uh, kind of summaries of data for all the four hundred stations. We can see that there are kind of many missing data. Uh, there are only about uh, thirty stations available that have this data. So we have uh, kind of too many. Uh, missing data uh, from USGS. And then we can just kind of plot all the uh, 21K uh, kind of flow lines of, sorry, 400 stations that we have, the, the data that we got from, uh, from NLDI's uh, kind of the, for the 21 kind of uh, K flow lines. Now, we, uh, now let's focus on Columbia River just uh, 
as a quick example to take a look at more example of uh, using the uh, kind of NLDI, we can get the basins for Columbia River, which is the ones that is located over here. And then we can get the uh, station, uh, we can get the basin and then the main flow line, as well as tributaries. We're just changing one, one parameter. And then once we have that, we can kind of plot the data. This is what we have. We can pull the same accumulated dams that, that we did for, for the for the 400 stations for this time, we want to do it for all the tributaries instead you know, so of only doing it for the, for, uh, for the main flow line. So if we do the accumulation and then we, we do some kind of filtering to get the max storage, uh, now we can see, for example, that uh, at the, the accumulated kind of maximum storage capacity of dams up to 2000 for all the tributaries uh, of the of the Columbia River, so we can see that it's pretty kind of easy to uh, pull the attributes for for large area uh, without having to do uh, much coding. So uh, I would be happy to uh, kind of answer any questions later. That's all I have. Awesome, thank you, Tahir, and just uh, some kudos. Tahir did all this on his dime. Um, as part of his graduate work, uh, as far as I know, I, I met him through the Summer Institute at the National Water Center, um, and just super, super, super impressed with the package, packages he's brought together and just how well they work. So, um, all right, so next up, I'm gonna share, um, share screen, let's do screen one again, so I need to share. All right, so I'm not going to get into quite that much of a um, example of what you can do with these packages, but I just want to kind of raise a little bit of awareness for um, two R packages, data retrieval and NHD plus tools. And so, so data retrieval is a, a very well um, exercised package. It looks like 104,000 total downloads from from CRAN, um, and going on 2,000 a month. Um, we could all hope to have that kind of use of our software, um, but data retrieval. So, so data retrieval um, recently had a client for the network link data index um, contributed to it. So if we go into function help, I'm um, just going to kind of show you where to find this. There's a find NLDI function. Um, and thanks to Mike Johnson, another kind of graduate school co colleague of mine um, for mostly implementing this find NLDI um, function. So this, this is a, a pretty convenient way to discover NWIS data, WQP data, um, or any other locations that happen to be available from the NLDI. Um, and it works if you're, if you're interested in the spatial data or if you're just interested in monitoring, monitoring locations. So pretty nice setup. Um, you know, it's, it, there are several ways that you can enter the NLDI here. I don't believe we even put any maps in here, but there's lots of examples that show you how to make this work. Um, so if you do need to, if you do want to discover USGS data in particular, but any data that happens to be indexed by the NLDI going forward. This is a client in the R programming language that's available. And then there's some extended tools in my package um, called NHG plus tools um, for uh, a little more spatial analysis. We can get basins, we can get the, the NLDI characteristics are available here. Um, and then the NLDI is used pretty heavily by this package to allow um, allow you to discover, say, upstream with tributaries sets of the NHD plus, and then use a web service to, to, to subset the NHD plus. So use of the NLDI is embedded pretty deeply in this NHD plus tools package. Um, so, so those two are available. And in the interest of time, I'm, I'm just going to keep moving. There's lots of, um, so like the get started here um, has examples that use the NLDI. There's various um, articles about the NHD plus um, NHG plus tools. There's also an article about the NLDI available for data retrieval. So, um, so that's cool. Uh, and with that, I think I'm going to step back to slides and do a little bit of wrap up and talk about GeoConnects. Um, so I see my colleague Kyle Anda is on. Um, hi. Uh, Kyle and I, Anda and I, so Kyle's from the Internet of Water team at um, Duke University, um, and we've been teaming up on this thing that we call geoconnects.us. 
Um, you can go to that URL, you can find out plenty more about the project, but it's a layer that we can add on top of all this other stuff we've been talking about that adds a layer, a, a, an element of persistence to many of these things that we're doing. And so when you, um, when I was showing you a NWIS monitoring location page, the URL that I went to is not the URL of the old NWIS monitoring location page, but it'd be awfully nice if we could have some persistence to those URLs over time so that links didn't break, references and link data didn't break, um, you know, all over the place. We need to, to insert stability where we actually need some flexibility and we don't want to maintain stability at some level. So geoconnects.us comes in there. It should allow us to maintain these redirects over time in the way that a digital object identifier does. And this would be to all the things that are indexed by the network link data index, um, as well as many of the things that are in the index itself. So the rivers, um, lakes, aquifers, et cetera, should get their own persistent identifiers. And we, sh and we should have, and we will have over time, um, a growing set of these kind of reference features to link our content to. And this geoconnects.us system is the kind of baseline infrastructure that allows it to us to do that. Um, so it obviously has a, a tight relationship with the network link data, data index um, as, the, as the kind of search service and the, 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 body, of, the body of cached indexed content. Um, and then there are relationships. So thinking about how I showed working with modeling modeling data that was discovered through the network link data index. Um, that integration of kind of environmental and monitoring, monitoring feature data um, plays nicely here because we can index the spatial information, the monitoring locations themselves um, in the NLEI and then have pointers that maybe go through geoconnects.us persistent identifiers um, to environmental data and monitoring data um, or, or model data and monitoring data. Um, and and so, so that's this, this connection over here. Um, so that's in a nutshell. I, I just wanted to kind of put this out there as a thing to be aware of. We're working on, and this is a growing um, set of persistent identifiers for environmental and monitoring features. It's associated with the network link data index. Um, and it should, in the long run, provide us some, some tighter, more persistent integrations with time series and other data that we actually want to access and work with. Okay, so how to contribute. Um, the NLDI is a community-based um, indexer. It's the idea is if you have content that's available on the internet, we wanna know about it and get it into the NLDI if you're interested. Um, so there's a GitHub and, and we'll, um, we'll get these slides linked to um, the ESIP wiki and, and to YouTube. Um, when this gets this recording goes out, but you can you can also Google for these very easily. Um, there's a NLDI crawler web page um, that I'm actually just going to open this up and show very briefly. Um, that shows that we have a security vulnerability, but it also shows um, that contributions can be made via pull request to this file. Um, and so this is the actual this is the information that the NLDI reads in when it goes to index the data that's currently in the, in the system. So you can see these source URIs go off to some geospatial table um, of, the, of the sites or, or the poor points or whatever they are that happen to be indexing. Um, and then there's some configuration for how the indexer works over here on the right. Um, so you can, you can actually fork this repository, add a row to this table, open a pull request and start a conversation about um, of kind of reviewing that content and getting it ready to go into the NLDI. And the description of those fields is available in the README from, from this repository. And then another good, really good place just to start if you wanna start a conversation about getting involved in um, kind of this linked data infrastructure um, and the, the kind of tools that are associated with it is just come and say hi on the issues in geoconnects.us. So um, there's a really nice write up here um, that kind of talks about what the project is. You can go view it on GitHub. And um, we are very interested in kind of building out a set of um, questions and answers and resources that may as well live in GitHub issues. Um, so I would, I guess I would just encourage people that have an interest in, in contributing content or data 
um, to this this GeoConnex kind of new new content into the NLDI space to meet up at GeoConnex. Um, and then I guess the, the last thing I would say is you know there's a whole bunch of resources that you've seen here today, um, but there's also always email um, and the ESIP Slack. So um, we use the ESIP Slack for um, pretty much all these projects at this point. Um, it's a fantastic place to meet up. I'm always online there. Um, you can find um, Tahir there. Um, you could, yeah, you can look us up um, and we're more than happy to chit chat and, and point you in the right direction if we don't have all the answers. So I think that is what I have. And if there are questions, we have seven minutes. We hit our time. You did great, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I, was, I was worried, but uh, you, you made it. Uh, that was fa fantastic uh, display of organization and, and restraint. There, there's no way I, I can ever do that. <laughs> uh, do we have any questions that are coming up in chat? Uh, Megan gave a link, a link to the ESIP Slack if anybody okay. wants to follow that. So I'd like to squeeze a question in. Um, Dave, are, are you or your team using any of the API management platforms? Um, MuleSoft, Swagger. So just wondering the NLDI how, you're, how you're orchestrating the API. Yeah, so stuff. the NLDI does have a Swagger doc. Um, okay. And then okay. the geoprocessing platform is actually going to be put out using um, OGC API processes. Oh. So we'll, we'll, we're actually using the Pi, Pi Geo API um, product yeah. for that. It's an open source project. Um, so those are the two. And so, so like Pi Geo API has a Swagger doc. Um, are you, there's do you some, employ there's Swagger Hub? Lot. Yeah, so, say again? Do you use Swagger Hub? I mean, if you've got a Swagger doc? No, not currently. The Swagger docs are all published directly through the APIs. Um, okay. There has been some thought into um, scaling things and using some of the utilities of um, Amazon's API gateway, um, just for, there's various utilities we could take advantage of there, um, especially around like naive denial of service attacks that we'd like to filter out these kinds of things that an API yeah. gateway would be handy for, but. but yeah, because yeah, how are you using, are you using tokens, um, keys to allow uh, access or is no, it just, just it's all it's all just completely open, um, okay. which hasn't been a problem yet. Um, we've, we have we did have a situation, those pages I showed you on the water quality portal got scanned by Google and it took the system down. Um, and we we modified some things so the that crawlers don't execute JavaScript and it's fine. Um, but but yeah, so that's that's kind of the state of things right now. Oh, really cool. Th thanks for that uh, demo demonstration. Um, Really neat. Let's see if there's any other questions up there. So, one thing actually that came up in chat separately um, was a question about um, the some of these future what's next things, um, and I just wanted to mention that there has been discussion um, and this stuff is all going to happen in the open source so if you if it happens soon you're going to see it start to happen um, there's been discussion of doing a pilot um, NHT plus HR implementation of a lot of this stuff probably in the upper Colorado River basin um, and this is actually another area if anybody's interested in pieces and parts of this um, you know advocate for them in the github issues there we don't have very many people advocating for what they want to see happen next. Um, and when people do, usually we hear it and have an excuse to work on it next. Um, so I just put that out there. Can you upvote a region? <laughs> no, uh, that we want you to work on? <laughs> it's national. We want to stay national. The pilot in the in, okay. in Upper Colorado is there for a reason, but um, but okay. yeah, maybe. <laughs> It looks like there's a, a question from from David there. Let's see, I put kind of the same question I ask every time. Basically, getting this this data coming in, you know, streaming in real time, 
putting it in um, thing logics, which is a, a thing of system that USGS is kind of preferring to use, and then putting into Dynamo DB or possibly Amazon Timestream, but how to you know post that. Um, I noticed that NASA pointed out that there's an ArcGIS online way that you can extract data from a Threads server and then map it. But when I asked about real time, nobody really knew you, you know, Threads, you, you, you have to take, have a, a file, you know, basically. Yeah. And so you could maybe post it every hour, but that doesn't, so like this is a, a function. Yeah, point. this is a pretty similar situation, but um, the way the crawlers are set up, they could be um, executed by a queue. So if say some important new data came in, you could set up something to watch a queue and kick off a crawl. So if there were new data that were available from a given source, um, we could have a basically an event-driven method of, of executing an addition to the index. But it's still, I mean, this is the same, this is the same issue as as Google crawling the web, right? You make a change and then you go tell Google to crawl your web page so that they get it into your index. There's not a lot of way around that with the current technical kind of paradigm. Um, so yeah. the historical time series would become known in the NLDI. So yeah. that would be a big benefit. You could go if you had a LoRaWAN sensor upstream from a USGS site. You could discover that the existence yes. of that sensor. That's right. Thanks. Yeah, and and as as and you're talking about some work coming out of NGWAS, correct? Yes. Yeah. No, I think as as that work progresses and we get our our kind of monitoring location registry matured around some of those real time or or newly installed sites, we're gonna we're gonna address that problem for sure. So. Okay. Okay, that's that's great. Thank you. All right, cool. Well, we'll uh, we'll work with Derek and Megan and others to uh, make sure we have the right links on um, the wiki and up in YouTube, and um, we'll try and get our slides up as as much as we can as well. So, um, other than that, looks like we're at time. So, yeah, perfect timing. I uh, got the questions in. Th thanks so much for the presentation. Thanks to all of you for joining. Um, we we will meet and convene again next month. Um, looking forward to seeing you. Excellent. Thank Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.